In what way are animals useful to people? Mascole? Dog. In what way are animals useful to people? Dog, dog help us to thieves. Come to get milk. We get French in, in pig. Yes, we get ham, which is made of bacon. Pig meat. Mm -hmm. Um, 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 uh, the molecules, the kululekile, good. Um, what do you want? What do you want? I don't know. Tell us, where do we get water? Open up our hands, where do we get water? Yes? Yeah, imagine. What do you call imagine in English now? Yes? Where do we get? Let us change, let us try to speak English, please. Where do we get water? To be the same thing, yes? Yes? All right, yes, Lord. I got a second. When they can do only. Hi. Hmm? Do you think you could get AIDS? I playing and talking to that child during interval? You can only get AIDS if your blood and his blood goes against each other, like flows through. The domestic animals, why are they tame? It's because I feel like a <laughs> Try Say it again. It's because it don't want to stay. <laughs> You don't want to stay where? Thirteen. Thirteen in English is forest, ne? They don't want to stay in forest. Payana besenza do. Ifunu pali. Pala. Then air bubbles came out. Why the air bubbles? Why does that show? Swimming. Swimming. So swimming. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We speak about learner-centered education in South Africa, for example, and yet we insist on teaching children in a language they don't understand. If it's learner-centered, you'd expect that the language of the child is the point of departure. Instead, it's the language not even of the teacher, because most of the teachers are not even first language speakers of English. It's a foreign language. In black and white, it is written in constitution that all the languages are equal. That, 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 that is written, but practically it doesn't, it's, it's not been done like that. It's the way that our, our mindset has been set up, that everything that is superior and everything that is pure must be done in English. That is a concept that our parents have. We want to speak English because we want white people to understand us. But I think it should be a, a, a two-way. They should also understand us. If we can speak their English, they must also learn to speak our course. <laughs> Teacher, <laughs> is to fry. It was quite unfair because uh, I, I would like try really hard to understand the question 
And then when I understood it, I couldn't answer it. It just felt like I was stupid when I, when I knew all the correct things. just couldn't say them. If the teacher asked me a question in Corsa, I, I would take about five minutes to understand the question, and by then it would, there would be another question. It would be so hard to write our exams in Corsa. And I would probably like leave the country and go to another country where you can write in, your, in the same language. If I had to write my exams in another language um, that I didn't understand, I would probably, I might be able to get um, a few marks, but I wouldn't be able to get enough to pass. I couldn't understand the question, let alone answer it, because um, I'm not very good at Kosovo. If I had to write exams, I wouldn't bother going to school. The textbooks are only in English and Afrikaans, which forces a child who's doing Kosovo to learn, to learn that before he, he, he even understand the content, what is being taught there, he should first understand, try to understand what, what is said, so the communication first, before going to the content of the subject. When they mark papers, they don't consider that this child is a a speaking child, papers are set on one standard, so it is very unfair and it is disadvantaging our kids really. When it is a biology paper, the biology paper will only have only two languages, that is Afrikaans and English, the Kosa is not there. Our kids are not passing the, the, the content subject as they will do if the questions were in, in their language. Some hear English only in your class. At home, nobody knows English and there are no TVs, you see, that's the problem. When you're talking them, to them in English, it's a foreign thing. The only kids who have mother tongue education from the cradle to the university are first language English-speaking children and very many first language Afrikaans-speaking children, which means that those who were advantaged before the fall of apartheid are still the advantaged after the fall of apartheid. We are asking for no more than what most people in the so-called first world have, namely mother tongue education. Close to the end, I got a bit bored because I didn't even bother to try because I couldn't understand what the teacher was saying. And it just um, makes me feel quite sad for people who have to do it every day. You don't get what you have to do with the I felt for, sorry for the people around me because they didn't quite understand what what the teacher was saying and I was the only one who quite understood what she was saying. Today I really envied Leo and admired him for the way that he answered most questions he was asked, in fact all of them, and I really wish that I could speak Kosa as well as he could. Um, I realised how hard it must have been for him in grade one when he came to an English school trying to learn a totally different language. He never heard any words of it. He couldn't understand anything. And I really think Leo's done very well to get as far as he has in English. Because of the hegemonic position of English in the world today, uh, because it's the key to social mobility, to upward uh, uh, social mobility in South Africa, people understandably and justifiably want uh, their children to learn English. What most people don't understand is that it doesn't follow, therefore, that they will acquire the best command of English if they are taught from day one through the medium of English. That does happen, of course, but it happens only under very specific conditions, conditions which don't exist in most South African schools, certainly not in most black schools. Ons het weer een keer 
twee spoelen, two coils. I will show you the primary coil. I will show you the secondary coil. En dan het ek hier die transformator, wat specifiek vir laboratorium doeleindes gemaakt is, want ons kan hom uit mekaar uithaal. In the South African case, the problem is really Afrikaans. There's a knee-jerk reaction to Afrikaans on the part of most black people, and because they want to lower the status of Afrikaans or even marginalize Afrikaans, uh, they can't do so without at the same time marginalizing the rest of the African languages. So the result is that they come out like people have done everywhere in, on the African continent for English only, or even in the, in the best of cases, for English mainly. I think what is happening at our school is um, parents got a, and to, our learners also got a negative perspective about Afrikaans. And uh, over the years with the apartheid system and all that, they put their children in the, in the English stream. When we compared the, 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 the results, Afrikaans underperformed. And um, we want to change that. And we're well on our way to do that. Most people, the vast majority, want their children to become proficient in English for very obvious reasons. And therefore, it's essential that we combine the principle of mother tongue education with the possibility of acquiring really high proficiency in English. Felisa, would you like to tell us your news? On Saturday, I went to my mommy's um, work. And in my view, the language medium policy is one of the main reasons, not the only one, it's one of the main reasons for educational failure uh, and as a result for failure in the economic and other uh, spheres of life. A quarter of the children who start in grade one eventually pass matric. There's no doubt that of those who pass matric, not even 10% are trainable. What happens normally is that business then has to make additional investment, compensatory investment, in order to get them up to speed, so to speak. The absence of mother tongue education is, one could almost say, an additional oppression, an additional infliction uh, on the poor. In Africa, most high-status, power-related functions are conducted through the medium of European language, mostly English, sometimes French, and, of course, Portuguese. Claims Cadena is speaking. This excludes the vast majority of people in almost any African country. By making it possible for the African languages to come into their own, for the African languages to be used as languages of power, we are simply saying that that, amongst other things, is a guarantee of democracy. There are many countries of Africa who can afford a delegation of 30 people to UNESCO and UNICEF conferences, and all this is charged to the education budget. If you could shift the emphasis to funding a bureaucracy, to funding teaching and learning, I think a lot of improvement can be made. People say it's far too costly to implement bilingual education. However, a number of studies have been conducted um, in the European Union and by the World Bank in countries like Guatemala and Senegal, which show that the real cost in implementing bilingual education um, is limited really to the production of teaching materials and teacher training. And when you assess this against the full cost of education um, overall, it amounts to about 10% of the um, budget for materials and teacher training. If you convert that to South African um, expenditure on education, it comes in at less than 1% of our total education budget. People are not learning and so they are repeating they are failing examinations, so that is waste. So if you continue to invest in that, you'll be investing in, uh, in failure, in, in uh, frustration. But what is most important is, uh, if you say education is expensive, it will be worthwhile to, uh, to try the opposite of education, which is ignorance. And I think ignorance in the long run is much more expensive.
Basically, what we're trying to establish are models of what's possible. Uh, and of course, we're working with other uh, NGOs that are involved in this field, as well as schools. Establishing an ambiance in which the Kosa language is as present as, for example, English, Afrikaans in the schools as well as outside the schools. Now, Tata Ilanuga is spongy. Nas spongy, must not. Nisifage Aba goes to just a plastic cinamanzi. Then Usiku Tisa is spongy AC. Nichonga Bowser wants a gandona. Younger than any born leo, Napalaba pans welfare. Classifaka is spongy set a manzi, Kuya Quense, Kama Kam, spongy set to cook color, the so million, or Sasifaka manzi, Sasikama, classes it to England at you so mean. Take this spray huh? and press the top part and see what's going to happen. You're going to record everything that you have observed. Yeah. That is strong, yeah? When we press the spray, the spray go up and the dots go down to the desk. And the smelling is great. Air particles move from where they are more to where they are less. Amasunzoana Omoya Aya Amba Window Apo Manin's Corner Aye Apo Manin the Corner. I want to I want to I want you to teach me science about in English and class. When I'm when when I don't understand. Yeah. Teach me in class. Uh, I, I don't understand when I'm teaching English. Majority of our learners are as I'm speaking, and as a result, uh, to actually have effective and efficient learning within the classroom, the language aid was introduced. How many sweets were each child get? Color ibale ku one. Njenga bani beni bonso pe poti. Ikala ku one two ich. Unfortunately, this year we had to cut down on one of the language aids, so now we only have one language aid, and this has a huge impact on teaching and learning in the classroom. The Western Cape Education Department gives us a budget of 131 per learner, which this year was 68,000. Um, our school fees are 860 rand, and with that budget, we have to buy textbooks for learners, um, resource material for teachers and learners, uh, municipality bills, telephone accounts, maintenance, um, basically the running of the entire school. Who's going to tell news? You are. Good girl. Go and go bell. On your turn, I will try to show you more distractions. Go and go figure out what's the best way to get to the end. On your turn, I'm going to pin that zalin zalin. Go, Baba, go and pin that zalin zalin. So pin that try to show you more. Hmm. Who's translating? Who's going to speak in English? Boya. Okay, Boya. Let's hear. Zipo said that on Saturday afternoon, another boy was playing on the road and the car bumped him and then um, her parents said that she must not play on the road again. Right, so what do we learn from that? If you want to play, you must play in the garden or in the park or in the pavement. The whole issue of whether the visibility of, for example, the Kosa language in the Western Cape, where only Afrikaans and English are visible, broadly speaking, that issue is one which is going to turn the whole thing around. Once we succeed in making Kosa more visible, people are going to demand Kosa. Not only Kosa-speaking people, but also others uh, to whom a sign you know, or an instruction may, may be vitally important. They'll want to know more Kosa. They'll want their children to know Kosa. It will give you an instruction that will say, please commence examining this patient's abdomen. Okay. I think it would be better if you used Ndikela, which is the more polite form. Um, can I take off your clothes? Basically from 2000, the initiative came from the Faculty of Medicine. Um, they were redesigning their courses and they wanted to include language as part of their curriculum. And they came to us as African languages at UCT and asked us to help them. The students made aware of the cultural situation in South Africa, the language issues. Um, um, you know, the fact that they have to function as multilingual citizens, um, not only in their workplace, but outside mm -hmm. as well.
it's basically an interactive um, kind of approach. We, we, we stress um, listening skills, oral skills, and no written skills. The aim is to do this in small groups, to make them interact with the material, and then bring them to a real-life situation where they actually apply it. Keep your eyes on his face. It's very, very important to, to have this combination of the clinical situation and the languages going together. That's where the level Somehow is. when you're learning a new language about which you know nothing, it does teach you a measure of humility. We need doctors who are humble and to show respect and how better than to show it in somebody's mother tongue, which may not be yours as the doctors, but you know, if you've once able to come into that patient's space from a linguistic level and a cultural level, that goes a long way to, to showing doctors as people. That's exactly the kind of doctor they want to produce and that's why language is absolutely integral to the whole program. One of the things that, that I've found with the medical students is that quite a lot of them don't have English as their first language and there seems to be a difficulty with conceptualising um, things that one's trying to teach them. For example, we put together a multiple choice question and the question was which of the following would you eliminate? A lot of the students whose first language isn't English weren't able to answer that question because they didn't understand the use of the word eliminate in that context and for them eliminate was to have a poo. So there is something quite definitely disadvantaging for students who don't have English as a first language. The language question is not simply about language. It's very much about the depth in which a child understands things. In other words, how the child learns to think, how deeply he or she actually understands the concepts. Research worldwide shows that children learn best in the languages that they know best. Uh, the study on which our project is based, the six-year primary project in Nigeria, showed that when children were taught in Yoruba, they did much better than when they were taught in English. We are looking at the medium of instruction issue in South Africa and Tanzania. All the animals that we know what we are hoping to achieve is to look at how learners who are taught geography and science, two key subjects, perform if they are taught in their home language and how they perform if they are taught in English. It's very difficult for children to master content in a language that they do not understand. The way forward is what I call mother tongue based bilingual education. In other words, giving priority to the home language, but also accepting okay. that English medium education is desired and desirable, but not to the exclusion of the child's first language. I want one person to summarize the story I've just told you. Who can try? Long time ago, there's a man and one child and a woman. That, that man was very angry with, with this child. One day, this woman don't, didn't, don't like, didn't want to give this child a money for a school and didn't want to wash her clothes and he takes her clothes put on the bed. That's a good try, my dear. You've done it. Beautiful. I just feel quite guilty because um, we speak English and we go, you know, and we get to learn, we get to learn all our subjects in English. But the people who, who who speak Khoza and Afrikaans have to learn their subjects in, 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 in English too, and that it just, I mean, what, what makes, you know, what, what makes us, what gives us the right that we get to speak our home language, learn in our home language, and they don't.